we continue in our journey through God's big story as we explore how the Spirit comes and interacts with our lives. Today we look at the Spirit of growth and look at the fruit of the Spirit and how that fruit can grow into our lives. Today's reading is from Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Hi, it's good to be here together to think a bit more about how God's Spirit works in our lives. I'm going to start with a uh, a different image this morning. Did you know that if you take a, a white flower, I've got a white chrysanthemum here, and you put it in some water that's got a few drops of food colouring in it, like this one, here's some I prepared earlier, well, they slowly turn blue. So we'll put that one in there. It takes a few hours, so uh, you'll probably have to wait until sun, come along on Sunday if you want to see what really happens or try it out for yourself. You see the Flower needs water, and as it draws the water up from, from the vase, the colour gets drawn with it, and it changes the colours of the petals. That gives us a, a picture of what it's like when we allow God's spirit to, to live in us, or to put a, another image in, in its place when we rely on God to provide us with living water. The, con, the uh, chrysanthemum, or the flower you see, is still the same flower it was but it's visibly different. And when God's spirit lives in us, we are still ourselves. We are still authentically Jane or whoever, but we're changed in ways that other people can see. So when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm still Jane. But God's spirit will be visible in my life, in the things I say and do, in my whole outlook, in fact. And when God's spirit lives in you, you are still you. But God's spirit is visible in your actions and your words and everything about you. And there's a kind of growth thing about it as well. The more that we allow God to fill us, the more visible he will be. Let's hold that image in our minds as we think about today's reading. So Paul was writing to a group of churches. There wasn't a city called Galatia in the same way that there was a city called Rome or Corinth. There's a few theories about exactly who Paul was aiming his letter to. But whoever it was for, it stands as a really strong summary of what the Christian faith is all about. It is a statement of the good news. And that good news is that people are justified. They're put right with God. They're brought back into a relationship with God by faith in Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. It's all about faith in Jesus and that complying with a rigid code of law was not what God intended for his people to do. That's the good news. That's the gospel. That's what good news means. That's what um, it means, isn't it? However, they came with a bit of a, a health warning as well. There was a danger in this because it could be interpreted to mean that God doesn't mind how people behave. And there were groups of early Christians who were making the most of that. They were taking the freedom that they'd received through their faith in Jesus and they were abusing it. And so just before the passage that we've heard read to us, Paul makes a very strong statement against sinful behaviour and he lists out what those sinful behaviours might include. He talks about sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like to wrap it all up. And he warns those who are reading the letter that those behaviours are not compatible with being a follower of Jesus. So back in the Old Testament, God had provided the law as a way of enabling his people to understand 
what it meant to live as his children, to live God's way, to live a holy life. But now God brings a new way, a completely different way of reconciling his children to himself, dealing with sinful human beings. And that was by Jesus dying on the cross and being raised to new life at the resurrection. That was what it was all about. That was the point of it all. And then there was the next step, though, to enable those people who had been uh, cleaned up, were in a fresh new relationship to continue to live as God's children. And that's what the Holy Spirit was all about, coming to fill and to transform people, to make us holy, to put it another way, to allow us to be aligned with the, God's nature. If you look back at that uh, chrysanthemum, the one here that's been in the, uh, in the blue water for a few hours now, it's taken on the colour of the water it's drinking. It is the colour. And if we think about it, we realise that the fruit that we heard read for us, the fruit of the Spirit, actually act as a very good description of what God is like. So we can say God is love. God is joyous. God is peace loving. God is patient. God is kind. God is good. God is faithful. God is gentle. God has self-control. And when we allow God's Spirit to live in us, when we drink his coloured water, as it were, then we will display those same attributes. And they're a wonderful list, aren't they? There's no law against them, as Paul said. Nobody could possibly object. But this isn't a lecture about trying really hard to live a good life. There's no sense in this of a kind of finger wagging, must try harder. Instead, it's an invitation to be open to God's spirit and to allow us to tr allow him to transform us from the inside out so that those things come out naturally. Paul describes the attributes as fruit, the natural outcome of the life of a plant, the purpose even of that plant. It's a really timely moment, isn't it, to, to use the image of fruit when we're starting to see signs of fruit appearing all around us, I've got some tiny, really hard green tomatoes appearing on some plants in the garden. And I'm longing for the point where they've turned red and we can enjoy eating. them. I've got a few fruit that I've, I've, I've dug out the fruit bowl uh, to get a sense of what fruit's like. And, and it's so varied, isn't it? Uh, I've got a great big melon with a really hard and gnarly skin. I've got some, well, slightly overripe bananas, very different to the melon. I've got a pomegranate. I don't know quite why we bought that, but it'll be yummy when we eat it. I've got a, a good old apple, a, a real traditional fruit. And I've got just a few really tiny alpine strawberries that I found lurking in the garden. Fruit grows in a huge variety of different ways and, and they're all lovely in their own very different ways. And the Holy Spirit brings that sense of variety into our lives. He doesn't fill us to make us all the same. He fills us in different ways to all be fruitful, but to be fruitful in a way that's unique to us. It's part of God's nature, part of his creative nature is to be a filling and fruitful and so, so varied. So let's try to draw this to a conclusion and think about um, how we respond to that. As you, as you hear those fruit read, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Do people pop into your mind who you know show those fruits in their lives? Perhaps you can think of times over the last week when you've shown those fruits, when you've been aware of uh, those things coming out in, in your outlook on life. Perhaps there have been times when you've been aware that actually they haven't come out. There was a chance to be fruitful, but you walked on by or you snapped and you said something that wasn't really very loving or helpful or whatever. As I said very clearly, this isn't a lecture about trying harder. Instead, you can pick your own word. It could be an invitation or a challenge or a reminder, 
to be open to God's Holy Spirit and to allow him to bring those fruits to life in, in your life, in your words, in your actions, in the way you see things. So let's think a bit about how we might actually practically do that, how we can be more open and those things can, can be let out more easily. I think one thing I find helpful is to kind of be think about it up front to plan. I, li I like to know ahead of times. What about spending a few minutes at the start of each day thinking through the things you're going to do that day? Perhaps looking at your diary and looking, thinking about the people you're going to meet and asking God to help you to uh, show those sorts of fruit, the love and joy and peace and all those other things in those interactions or in those meetings. But we can't always prepare for it, can we, quite like that. And perhaps there'll be times when we are faced with an immediate situation, something where we um, are put on the spot in the moment. And perhaps then sometimes it's helpful to stop and to not go dashing in too fast and to just give God a moment to, to bring us back into line, to allow him to display his nature in us. Or perhaps it's about being sensitive to the moment. I think of these as like Holy Spirit nudges, things that just randomly come into my head where I suddenly think about a person and wonder how they are. Or when I suddenly think, oh, perhaps I should do that. And I think it's worth being sensitive to those things and being aware that sometimes that's the way that God uh, prompts us and encourages us to, to, to live out the way he wants us to live. And God will bless us and he'll bless the people we meet as we allow his fruit to, to come out in our lives, as we allow his Holy Spirit to fill us and to work through us and to allow us to become the same colour as God is. So let's share a prayer as we uh, bring this time to a conclusion. Let's pray together now. Lord, may we bear the fruits of your spirit. Give us love that boundless healing energy which transforms the world. Give us joy, because no darkness or evil can overcome you. Give us peace to quiet our hearts and to free us from bitterness. Give us patience to go on following you even when it's hard. Give us kindness to reach out to our neighbour and to the person who needs to be loved. Give us goodness to give with a generous heart and without ulterior motive. Give us faithfulness to stay at your side come what may. Give us gentleness to respect the freedom and integrity of others. Give us self-control to see our weaknesses and overcome them in your strength. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can bear your fruits. Amen.